The Gentleman TV series has just hit Netflix and it's safe to say that this is pure Guy Ritchie doing Guy Ritchie things and making an instant gem of a TV show that's centered around gangsters. If you like the film Snatch from the turn of the century, then there are actors in that that actually appear in this 24 years later. And if you also like the film The Gentleman, which was released a couple of years ago, which was by Richie too, you'll see how this takes what was great about that film and put it in a show where we got more time with the characters and more time in the world of gentlemen. With Theo James leading the way and Kaya Scodelario joining him there as well, there was backstabbing, a lot of blood, an exaggerated story, some solid performances, but most importantly, a fun time. So let's jump into this video and break down all that there was to take away from the show. Here is the gentleman ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The ending explained. Now, with the ending of this show, it all relied on the domino effect and a meticulously timed plan that was perfectly synced up. There was a reveal process, like was seen in the film, where the truth comes out in a way that we didn't really expect to see. So, kind of a twist. We saw that Bobby Glass said that he wanted to sell the empire that he created, and he wanted offers north of £150 million to even consider it. And he entrusted Eddie and Susie to go to all of the people that we basically met throughout the show, such as Mercy, Henry Collins, Mr. Johnston, and also Peter, with the intention of getting the offers from them. However, deep down, despite Eddie spending the entirety of the show wanting to get rid of the operation off of his land because he didn't want to be associated with crime, he had this feeling where he was constantly being pulled towards it because he knew that he was actually quite good at participating in that kind of lifestyle. So himself and Susie put a joint offer together, one that wasn't the highest, but there was a reason for that. Stanley Johnston, with a T, laid down the highest offer that was accepted. But this was where Eddie and Susie's plan came into place where they essentially turned each and every person on one another. So with Mr. Johnston winning the bid, he was under the impression that he was going to get the empire, the empire that he so desperately wanted. But in reality, Eddie was working with Henry Collins and his accountant. The people who knew where Mr. Johnston kept his tax records, which were false, and they were sent to the government, which resulted in his arrest and him being sent to prison, which meant that he wasn't able to complete the purchase. From here, Eddie then went to Mercy and told her that she came second to Sticky Pete, who she believed was winning at that point, and with her not wanting to upset her associates that were flying over because she'd essentially told them that they were going to get a brand new empire, she ultimately went all Madame Chop Chop and chopped him up in the parking lot. However, once she did that, Henry Collins got involved and killed her in the parking lot as he drove by. Henry Collins was told that if he handed over 15 million pounds, then his debt would be wiped and he'd be forgiven for what he did to Jack Glass in setting up the fight which resulted in him being put in a coma. But that was also a trick and in the end, he was taken into the woods by Jeff and placed on his knees. But we'll get to that as that was right at the end. This then meant that all of the other big hitters in the area, albeit in different fields, were wiped out and there were no more bidders left other than Eddie and Susie. But it was then revealed here that Bobby never actually had any intentions of selling the Empire at all. He just wanted to see if Susie and Eddie wanted in on it together and to see if Eddie had finally come to the realization that he liked that kind of lifestyle and wanted to be a part of it. This all tied back to something which Susie said in one of the first episodes where even though Eddie comes from aristocracy, he's able to be exposed to the gangster lifestyle that they're in, not be phased by it and actually thrive within it. The final part of his journey that he went on was down to us to decide. Henry Collins was knelt down on the floor in the woods and was about to be fired at by either Eddie or Susie. This was for the reason of revenge for what he did to Jack. And it was here where Susie then said to Eddie that he should do it to complete his journey. We saw him fire the weapon, but we didn't find out if he killed Henry. That's down to us to decide. Eddie didn't actually have a problem with killing. He killed people in the show and we also heard that he killed an animal when he was younger with no issue whatsoever. So considering that it seemed like he cared about Susie, I think he killed Henry Collins. All of the people that we saw in the show wouldn't think twice about doing that. And Eddie was actually one of the best of them all. So I think that completed his journey and essentially showed which side he was now on. He was a part of that gangster lifestyle and not only followed in his father's footsteps, but developed forward from them. The final thing that we saw was inside of the prison that Bobby Glass was in three months later, and we saw that Mr. Johnston was now in there with him, showing that his net worth of £2.5 billion was something that bought him the luxuries of a prison that realistically wasn't even a prison. So the once enemies were now sat across from one another. 
Mr. Johnston was also revealed to be the person who was behind all of the trouble that was going on at the manor, with de Grot, Keith being a snake, and every other occasion that it felt like it was going to crumble. This was because he wanted to acquire the business. But with Eddie giving him a fake list of all of the names of the Dukes that had a location as part of the operation, when he thought he had the upper hand, he actually didn't. He was never going to be able to beat them. My review of the show. Honestly, I thought this show provided a great time. The eight episodes were so Guy Ritchie in the way that certain parts of the story were told to us. For example, when we'd see the build-up to something happening, we'd cut to the aftermath and then have the events narrated over during a conversation. There was also a rapid pace to the storytelling, which I thought was very telling of his style. And also, there were Guy Ritchie actors that were featured with the likes of Vinnie Jones and Ray Winston. The story was very easy to follow, despite there being complexities to the plot in the sense that there were twists and turns that were going on. It was a very British cast, which I thought worked well for the show, considering it was primarily focused on the different corners of the country and gangs within it. Plus, there were also many faces that I recognized from all walks of TV life, from British soaps up to Hollywood A-listers. So there was no discrimination against levels of performers, which I thought added to the rawness of the story and the show. Theo James was the perfect choice to lead the show as Eddie, and Kaya Scodelario as Susie was great too. I mainly remember her from Skins from back in the day, and she was great in that. I know she has done some other movies since then, but this is probably the best thing that I've seen her in since Skins. She embodied the role well, and her chemistry with Theo James was just great. Daniel Ings was also really good too. He does normally play that kind of goofy type character, but this was one that was extremely frustrating to watch because he kept causing all of the problems despite his brother constantly getting them out of the issues that they found themselves in. In terms of the story, I thought it flowed quite well. However, I would say that around the midpoint of the season, it did feel a little bit like side quests were just going on. For example, the whole thing with Max and also Mercy. I found those episodes to just be a bit boring because they were inconsequential and didn't feel too connected to the wider plot. I understand that it was all about showing that Eddie was taking more of a liking to that lifestyle, despite wanting to be as far away from it as possible. And it also connected to the ending with everybody turning on each other. But as episodes go, they were most probably my least favorite. I also think that the story with Jeff being the father of Charlie was a bit shoehorned in and wasn't really that necessary. I suppose maybe it was more done to show the difference between Jeff and their father, seeing as though it sounded like Jeff was there for the children more than what their father ever was. But yeah, it just didn't really need to be in it as it didn't add anything, but we just kept going back to it. This show was all about Eddie being exposed to a lifestyle that he didn't know existed and wanting out of it, but ultimately getting pulled deeper into it because he realized he was actually good at it. And that did make for an interesting watch. Do I think there'll be a season two? Well, I could definitely see them doing a season two, but they wiped out a lot of the competition in the area, but they were all heavily connected, so maybe a season two could be focused around them dealing with that, but time will tell. I'd quite like to see a sequel to the film, to be honest. How does this show compare to the film? Well, I do think it's a nice addition. I don't think it's as good as I think the film is a modern day classic, just like what Snatch is from back in the 2000s. But this show does embody the feeling of both of those films so well. And I think the show will live on through people that enjoy that type of show. Because having an eight episode piece like that from Guy Ritchie did make for some great viewing. I definitely recommend giving the show a watch because I don't think you'll be disappointed. You're always left wanting to find out what's going to happen and you just can't stop yourself from letting that next episode start playing. So, there you have it. The Gentleman Ending Explained.